Matt Taibbi. But before I do, let me read a sentence from a recent paper by Dean Baker, who concludes most of the pension shortfall using the current methodology is attributable to the plunge in the stock market in the years 2007 to 2009. If pension funds had earned returns just equal to the interest rate on 30-year Treasury bonds in the three years since 2007, their assets would be more than $850 billion greater than they are today. And this, um, he quotes David K. Johnson of Tax.com, the average Wisconsin pension is $24,500 a year, which is hardly lavish. But what is stunning is that 15 percent of the money contributed to the fund each year is going to Wall Street in fees. Which is why we now ask the question, why isn't Wall Street in jail? Actually, that's the title of reporter Matt Taibbi's new article for Rolling Stone magazine. In the piece, Matt writes, quote, "'Nobody goes to jail. This is the mantra of the financial crisis era, one that saw virtually every major bank and financial company on Wall Street embroiled in obscene criminal scandals that impoverished millions and collectively destroyed hundreds of billions, in fact, trillions of dollars of the world's wealth.'" Well, I interviewed Matt Taibbi on Sunday about his report. Now I want to play an excerpt of our discussion. We're seeing these mass protests in Madison, Wisconsin, and there's other uh, protests that are happening. We see the working poor, the middle class, under tremendous stress, and yet they're the ones who are being hit hardest, not Wall Street. Explain what has happened. Why isn't Wall Street in jail? Well, it's an incredible story. I mean, just to back up, you know, provide some context, I think, for this Wisconsin thing, and especially for the Ohio thing, given what their governor used to do for a living. Explain. Uh, well, he was uh, an employee for Lehman Brothers, uh, and he was— This is Governor Kasich. Governor, Governor Kasich, yeah, and he was intimately involved with um, selling, uh, getting the state of Ohio's pension fund uh, to invest in Lehman Brothers and buy mortgage-backed securities. and. Of course, they lost all that money, um, and this broadly was really what the mortgage bubble and the financial crisis was was all about. It was essentially a gigantic criminal fraud scheme, where all the banks were uh, taking mismarked mortgage-backed securities, very, very dangerous, toxic subprime loans. They were chopping them up and then packaging them as AAA-rated investments, and then selling them to state pension funds, to insurance companies, to Chinese banks and. Dutch banks and Icelandic banks, and of course these things were blowing up, uh, and you know there were all those funds were going broke. But what they're doing now is they're blaming the people who are collecting these pensions. They're blaming the workers. They're blaming the firemen. They're blaming the policemen. Whereas in reality, they were actually the victims of this fraud scheme. And the only reason that people aren't angrier about this, I think, is because they don't really understand what happened. If these were car companies that had sold a trillion dollars worth of defective cars uh, to the citizens of the United States, there would be riots right now. But these were mortgage-backed securities. It's complicated. People don't understand it. And they're only now, I think, beginning to realize that they were defrauded. Explain what the crime is, who has profited, who should be on trial? Well, uh, you know, again, the broad crime in all of this was just fraud. They were taking these banks were taking again these subprime mortgages and they would have these billion dollar pools of mortgages where in some cases 70 or 80 percent of the loans were to people who had no identification or or no jobs uh, or who had put no money down into the mortgage. And then they were taking these loans and applying this phony baloney hocus pocus math these derivative instruments and turning them into AAA-rated investments. And they were marketing, again, these securities to, say, state pension funds as AAA-rated investments, which means credit risk almost zero. So they took the stuff that they knew was very, very risky and very, very likely to default, and they were going to the state of Wisconsin, the state of Ohio, the state of New York, and saying, hey, this is almost as safe as, or in fact, it is as safe as the United States Treasury bonds. You should buy this, and you'll earn a little bit more than you'll earn if you buy T-bills. The reality was they were just taking absolutely worthless stuff and sticking it with these people, and they and then fleeing the scene. This is this is no different than drug dealers who take a bag of oregano and sell it to you as you know a pound of weed. That's that's exactly the same scam. Talk about John Mack and Gary Aguirre. This is an amazing story, just because it it demonstrates how far above the law. 
these people are. John Mack is one of the most powerful people on Wall Street. Right now, he's the chairman of the board at Morgan Stanley. He used to be their CEO. Way back in 2001, when he was sort of between jobs, he had left Morgan Stanley and was interviewing with Credit Suisse First Boston. Um, he was involved in a case uh, that was investigated by the SEC. A, a hedge fund called Pequot uh, made a very suspicious investment into a company called Heller Capital, which was about to be acquired by General Electric. This hedge fund bought you know, an enormous amount of Heller stock three weeks before this acquisition by GE of Heller. Credit Suisse First Boston was Heller's investment banker. John Mack was interviewing for the job with Credit Suisse a few days before Pequot made its purchases. And he was in direct contact with the hedge fund guy who made those purchases. Under any normal circumstances, he would be targeted for investigation by the SEC. And his name was? Uh, the investigator's name was Gary Aguirre. And Aguirre. And the guy buying up. Art Sandberg was the name of this hedge fund uh, manager. Uh, he was a big star on Wall Street. In fact, there are articles about, you know, how does Art Sandberg uh, manage his amazing uh, returns year after year? Well, you know, this was sort of a clue as to how. Anyway, uh, this SEC investigator named Gary Aguirre um, wanted permission to go uh, interview John Mack. Uh, and his superiors at the SEC told him. They basically told him that, that he couldn't, uh, and the reason they said was because Mac has, quote unquote, powerful political connections. Uh, at the time, he was a ranger, one of Bush's fundraising rangers. He would later become a major fundraiser for Hillary Clinton. Um, so he played both sides of the fence. This, again, is very typical of Wall Street. Uh, and Aguirre, when he pressed the matter, he was fired by the SEC. You say in your article that the justice system has actually evolved into a highly effective mechanism for protecting financial criminals, not just not prosecuting them, right. but protecting them. Well, one of the things that I, I found out when I was interviewing uh, you know, former SEC officials um, and uh, whistleblowers, people who had been involved in some of these cases, is, uh, you know, when you look at the revolving door situation with all these the Mary Jo Whites and the Gary Lynches and uh, the Linda Thompsons, these former high-ranking financial cops who uh, leave government service and they go to work in these millionaire partnerships on, on Wall Street, um, it creates this collegial atmosphere uh, where it's just a few, uh, a small group of lawyers who all know each other and they are on this constant merry-go-round from government back to private service, back to government again. And they're really in this, it's, it's, it's far too collegial. There's a scene in my story where um, the current head of the uh, SEC enforcement, Robert Kuzami, is giving a speech to all these lawyers. And he's saying, you know, we're, we have a new policy now where if you're a defendant or if you're a company that's being investigated, you can come to the SEC and we'll get you answers as to whether or not the Department of Justice has a criminal interest in your case. Uh, so essentially, the SEC is now acting as a middleman uh, for these companies, uh, so they can go and find out whether they're going to be criminally prosecuted. Then once they get that information, they can make a decision about whether or not to settle financially with the SEC, uh, and they pay a settlement. Nobody gets criminally prosecuted. Uh, no individuals ever get fined. They pay these fines, and they almost always have a, a little uh, section in there that says that they do not admit uh, wrongdoing. Uh, so they don't even have to say they're sorry, essentially. They, uh, these companies go and they pay their fines. No individuals have to suffer at all. Uh, and it's all done in a very collegial way. You suggest in your piece that Bernie Madoff went to jail because it was rich people who were the victims. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Every single uh, you know, former investigator or current investigator that I, that I talked to said the same thing. Madoff went to jail because the wrong people suffered. Uh, you know, it, was, it was famous actors. It was you know, the, the glitterati in New York. If these were you know, teachers and firemen and, and all the, you know, the, the usual suspects, you know, look at the, the, we have a million people in foreclosure uh, in, in this, this country right now. And a lot of them are there because of predatory lending and because of this fraud scheme. Uh, but there are no criminal prosecutions. Um, that's, I think that's the reality now, is that we don't see anybody being criminally targeted unless, they, unless their victims were powerful people themselves. But we have two and a half million people in jail in this country, you know, more than, more than a million who are in jail for nonviolent crimes. Um, and, and yet, we couldn't find a single person on Wall Street to do even a day in jail for 
losing 40 percent of the world's wealth in a, in a criminal fraud scheme. And that tells you that we have this, this goes beyond, you know, the, the, the cliche that rich people have better lawyers and they have an advantage. This, this is a step beyond that. This is a situation where the system is completely corrupted and it's true regulatory capture. These SEC and the Justice Department are essentially subsidiaries of Wall Street. Matt Taibbi, his new